President Donald Trump says he's consulted the National Rifle Association about the 3D printed guns, but the White House won't say if he thinks the public should have access to those blueprints. Paul May is in New York. He serves as board president for New Yorkers Against Gun Violence. It's an organization working to reduce gun violence through legislative advocacy and education. I want to welcome you. Uh, Paul, I want to get your thoughts first off about this judge issuing the restraining order. I think it's common sense, and I think it would have been uh, almost surprising if he didn't issue a restraining order. The fact that this is a, uh, an issue that people are calling just a First Amendment issue is ludicrous. Obviously, there's a long history of restrictions on what speech can be limited and can be restricted, and this falls squarely into that realm. Paul, uh, one gun control advocate says uh, this is not simply instructions. It's download, plug and play. You've got officials in several states arguing that this could put guns in the hands of terrorists, criminals, people who are actually prohibited from having firearms. Are they overstating things or, or is that how you see it as well? If that's all they're saying, they're understating it, because it also would put hands, guns in the hands of children. Our local public library has a 3D printer. If somebody wants to buy this program, bring it into the library, plug it in, they could print a, a gun. A 10-year-old kid uh, who got the program off the Internet could make a gun and who knows, do what with it. It is a restraining order, so obviously the legal battle is not over. Where do you see this thing going? It's hard to predict because in today's environment, what we thought made common sense kind of seems to be taking a holiday, but it doesn't, I can't imagine any sane jurist making a decision that this is okay to go forward. We saw uh, earlier this year, uh, after the shooting deaths in Florida, we saw a lot of young people carrying the banner for gun control. It seemed like perhaps the tide was shifting. Uh, we also said that after Sandy Hook. Um, wh where is this country when it comes to guns? You're absolutely right. The groundswell from the Parkland shooting uh, and has been maintained by young people, and not just young people in Florida, young people in New York, uh, out on Long Island. We had a, a well-attended march just this past weekend. There's been lots of continued support for sensible gun legislation, and I don't see it fading, and I'm encouraged by that, but obviously we're not going to uh, rest on our laurels. We're going to continue to move forward and make sure that sensible gun legislation and sensible decisions uh, in the, in the uh, sphere of the judicial as well as uh, the legislative continue. Paul, you say you're encouraged, but, but isn't it discouraging that uh, it seems as though uh, from a legislative standpoint, um, you know, the, the Congress is immobilized. They really won't move on this. And now, instead of less guns, you, you have the potential with something like this where you can see a lot more guns out there. You can't be involved in gun violence prevention for any time at all, let alone the 25 years that I've been doing it, and not be somewhat of an optimist or you'd completely give up. So, yes, I'm encouraged. Every little step is a step in the right direction. Yes, there are uh, forces flowing against us, but I do believe that especially the youth movement that you referenced earlier is on our side now and that the tide is turning and that common sense is prevailing even among gun owners because the, uh, the NRA, you mentioned earlier that uh, President Trump consulted the NRA. This is going to be one of the rare instances where the NRA agrees with uh, gun violence prevention advocates for different reasons, of course. The NRA doesn't make any, the NRA clients and supporters don't make any money uh, from the sale of uh, software to make guns. Their supporters are gun manufacturers and ammunition manufacturers. So they don't want it because it's uh, taking gun sales away from their supporters. We don't want it because it's putting guns into the hands of, as you say, terrorists, criminals, and as I said, children. And, uh, you're out there in this sphere. Did you see this coming at all? It's been kicking around. Uh, this started in 2013 when the company in Texas first uh, issued these plans. It then went to the courts, and the courts settled the matter. Uh, we, we thought the courts settled it by, by uh, barring the release, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and actually to the surprise of this Texas company, they weren't expecting it, uh, the government decided to settle and allow them pretty much everything that they had wanted in their initial lawsuit.
So no, I didn't really see it coming, and hopefully it's uh, going to go away also. Well, Paul, we'll keep our eye on it. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you.